Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. The motion to recommit is very simple, as the clerk stated. Nothing, uh, it will ensure that nothing, nothing in this bill shall be construed to authorize any party to violate the medical privacy of any woman, including the victims of rape incest with respect to her choice of or use of comprehensive health insurance. Here we are today, Speaker, on the day of the State of the Union when long-term unemployment insurance has lapsed, debating a recycled bill that attacks women's health care. Uh, this is truly an example of, of an out-of-touch moment for the majority. The legislation under consideration today fundamentally lacks compassion. Women's health advocates have expressed strong concerns about its impact on women's right to privacy when it comes to their medical care and decisions. This bill has damaging effects on women who have been raped, victimized by incest, who suffer from debilitating illnesses like the one that the gentle lady from California described, uh, Vicki, who want nothing more but their right to make their own personal care, health care decisions with their own private insurance. I've heard people continuously say that this is a recodification of the Hyde Amendment. We all uh, abide by the Hyde Amendment, but this bill seeks to strip, strip women of their rights to have insurance, even in the private insurance market. That is why I invite my colleagues to join me in passing this motion to recommit today, to ensure that we do not unintentionally eviscerate protections that are fundamental to women's health and liberty. We're greatly concerned about this legislation, that it would force women in private health insurance to have to quote, unquote, justify their need for a full range of reproductive health care services, even if their life is in danger or if they've been the victim of sexual assault or incest. This legislation, again, could remove the option for a health insurance company to choose to offer comprehensive women's health services. Many of us remember, some of us on a very personal level, the egregious history of this issue. Many of us remember the shame and stigma that women victims face and still do face when they come forward to seek services. Dependent on how this bill is implemented, a woman could be required to provide extensive documentation to save her own life or even prove to her insurance company that she was assaulted. What will happen? Will she have to go to court, Madam Speaker? Will there be an IRS audit? Mr. Spe Madam Speaker, there are just so many unanswered questions. And the answers could have meaningful consequences for women across our entire country. What kind of proof would a woman need to exercise uh, options for health care? Who gets to determine whether or not a woman's sexual assault was a legitimate rape? What kind of intensively private information would be required to establish this proof? Who? in the insurance company or other entity would be equipped to make a ruling on the validity laid out in the bill. Oh, we remember our history as women of humiliation and public degradation that forced victims of rape or incest to stay in the shadows rather than to get the health care they need and deserve or to seek justice against their attacker. This motion to recommit simply makes sure that we uphold our history of protecting the confidentiality and medical privacy of women, upholding women's constitutional right to health care, particularly those who have terrible crimes. I urge my colleagues to adopt this motion to recommit, and I yield back the balance of my time.